What is going on guys, DBG here and 2K have released some new historic players onto the market NBA 2K18. The funny thing is, is that right now, I'm fairly sure none of them are actually on the market because nobody is opening these packs. But if you have any interest in what the cards are that are going onto the market, or if you just want to know the stats, that's what this video is for, because literally none of them are on the market right now. So anyway, now let's go over the players. So now, this the first one I think is genuinely just a typo because they say it's Milwaukee Bucks, Ricky Pierce, and I'm 99% sure that this uh, player is in the game. Yeah, he is. He's got a salary of 80. So it's actually the other Ricky Pierce, which looks to be a better card. 84 home shot, 3, not bad at all. 94 home shot mid, really good. Um, 85 speed, that's good. 82 acceleration, that's good. 79 ball control. Um, 70 on ball defense, not great. So this card's decent, like, it is decent, decent speed, not a great driving dunk, so if this card is around the 8 or 9k MT mark, it could be an alright card, especially because of that mid-range shot. Not a great card, but not a bad card either. So next we got Brooklyn Nets, jo Joe Johnson. Like, he was an all-star, why? Why is this card a sapphire? Like, come on, you see role players having ruby cards, he was literally an all-star. Um, open shot mid 88, open shot 386, good speed, acceleration, vertical, decent, I guess. 65 driving dunk, not going to be a defender because he's Joe Johnson. 78 ball control is decent. So let's actually compare him to the uh, other Joe Johnson card. That is actually um, really cheap. So I'm going to compare him to the, uh, what's his, league leaders, I think, Joe Johnson. Um, he's basically almost identical, except a little bit better at shooting. So again, if this card is anything more than 10k, there's no point buying it because Joe Johnson's release is really, really awkward. So it's not going to be an incredible card. It'll be decent, but not incredible. So now we've got Magic Grant Hill. This card could be insane. He's got only an 80 driving dunk. Let's see what his tendencies are. Only 80, which again is kind of poor. He's got 86 speed, 85 acceleration, which is good for a 6'8 small forward. Not a great open shot, 3 of 70. Decent ball control of 80, decent defense, and this card is probably the exact same as his 86 from last year. I haven't checked that up, but um, genuinely, like, this card's alright. It's alright. It's a decent all-around card, but at this stage in the game, I don't think it does any one thing well enough to warrant being more than at 7 or 8k MT, to be honest. Now we've got the Bucks Jack Sigma. This means that there's a 99% chance that we get a Supersonics or a Thunder Jack Sigma sometime down the line, whether it's a playoffs card, whether it's a theme card, there's a better 99% chance we get at least one Jack Sigma card this year. So he's getting 80 open shot three, which is good, 85 open shot mid, good pulse hook, good pulse fadeaway, decent speed of 62. Not the best defender, and a decent enough rebounder. So this card, like if he's really cheap, could be solid, like he's a good stretch five. It looks very similar to that Ray for Friends card. Like decent shot three, decent shot mid, good inside, um, not terrible, not great, but not terrible on defense. Good enough rebounding, relatively, well not slow, not fast. So an overall just average enough card. So now we've got Sapphire Jeff Hornacek from the Jazz. A really good three point shooter with that 92 open shot three. He's got no speed, no real ball control, like, yeah, this card's just going to be a spot-up shooter, and even though he's got decent defensive stats, he's a 6'3", slow shooting guard, so there's much better cards. Like, the Danny Green gold card is way better than this. Heck, even the gold card Buddy Heal is probably better than this. Gold JJ Reddick's probably as good as it, like, this card really doesn't have anything going for it, and no matter what price it is, I wouldn't even suggest considering picking this guy up, unless you're a huge Jeff Hornacek fan. So now we got Mo Williams' Cleveland card. Again, he was an all-star and still only has a Sapphire card. So he's got 96 open shot mid, 92 open shot three. He's got 92 speed, acceleration, 90 ball control, no defense whatsoever, but this card could be nice. Like, this isn't, actually this is a 2011. He was an all-star in 09, I think, but uh, whatever, the years are sometimes off. But um, this card could be nice, especially if it's really cheap. This card is, looks way better than his dropping 50s card from last year, and that was an all right card. So, honestly, while it's not a great card, if it's 15k and he drops it out, this could actually be a steal because he's one of the best shooting point guards in the game right now. Next, we've got PJ Brown from the Miami Heat, a center who's on, who's seven for one actually, so he is quite big. And more than likely, you may not be able to play this guy with Tyson Chandler unless the glitch has been fixed. It used to be if you looked up PJ Brown, Tyson Chandler came up. I'm actually gonna look that up now on my console to see if that still happens. 
And yes, it does. Tyson Chandler still does come up and there's no PJ Browns in sight. So um, more than likely, um, you won't be able to play him with Tyson Chandler, but is that going to be a big deal? I doubt it. Um, this is basically a Tyson Chandler copy. Wow. Wow, this is this card is basically Tyson Chandler. That is crazy. Like, oh my god. This is like a pretty much copy and paste Tyson Chandler with a few stats changed here and there. Like giving him a bit, little bit better mid-range shot and changing a few defensive stats. Wow, it's, these guys are lazy. This is basically a copy-paste Tyson Chandler. So if he's any more than Tyson Chandler, um, actually he's Tyson Chandler with a mid-range shot. So whatever price Tyson Chandler is, he's probably worth exactly that plus about a thousand coins. <laughs> now we've got an 87 overall Christian Leitner. I think he was an all-star when he was with the Hawks as far as I know. Oh my God, he's got hot zones everywhere. He's got a 90 shot mid, 81 shot three. Not great speed of 60. If that speed was higher, this card would be a nice stretch four. Good post hook, good post fadeaway, good standing layup, good shot close. Good low post defense, good on ball defense. Decent ish block of 71. He's 6'11, so he's not particularly tall. And this card could be a nice stretch four. If he ends up going really cheap, but any stage this card is really cheap, he could actually be a really nice card. And while he's not like up there at the top of the range with like the Anthony Davises in terms of power forwards. If this card is 20k or so, right now he could be good and because of those hot zones throughout the year, if there ends up being another market crash on certain historic players, like remember with the duos last year, this card could be actually quite a nice one to pick up and use. So now we got Lenny Wilkins who was like literally the most overpriced player last year. His, um, was it Playmakers card? I can't even remember what it was but he was so expensive. Hot zones pretty much everywhere, 85 open shot 3, 92 open shot mid, 91 on ball defense IQ, which is good, but he is only 6 foot 1, isn't going to be dunking it at all, 89 ball control, 87 speed, 87 accelera 86 acceleration, and poor rebounding, but it doesn't really matter because he's 6 foot 1. Another solid enough card, will be a solid enough shooting card, but if he's anything more than 5 or 6 KMT, probably isn't worth it, especially because he's Ruby and he's probably worse than the Mo Williams card. Funny thing is, he's not even wearing his Supersonics jersey in this picture. He's wearing a Western All-Stars jersey. Now we've got Kevin Duckworth from the Trailblazers. Seven foot tall center. He's got terrible speed of 35. Decent shot mid, decent free throw. Not a great shot three. Even though he might actually hit a couple from the corners with that 50 rating. He's got a good post hook and post fadeaway, good rebounding stats. Terrible block of 45. And that's really bad. Good low post defensive IQ though, um, terrible lateral quickness, he's got terrible driving dunk, not a great standing dunk, and yeah, this card's going to be not very good, like, really, it's not going to be good, it doesn't do anything particularly well, it doesn't block shots particularly well, it's not fast, it's not going to shoot the ball particularly well, it's going to be decent inside, but post game has been nerfed this year, so... A, yeah, a card I would probably avoid at all costs. Now we've got Jose Calderon's Toronto Raptors card. No wonder this one was a Detroit Pistons card, where they gave a 98 free throw, even though he didn't lead the league in free throw percentage. Like, league leaders didn't lead the league in free throw percentage. It, this card does not make any sense. But this card, however, he shot 98% for a season for the Toronto Raptors, which is why he's got a 98 free throw on this card. 97 home shot three as well is really good. 86 ball control, 84 speed, 82 acceleration. So the league leader's Calderon is like 15k. And a little bit of difference in ball control. Anything else of note? Minus 8 note open shot mid, that's kind of big. And there's nothing else of note difference. So if this card's more than 20k, just leave it. Because like you can get this card for 15k and it's a little bit worse. But really, not that much worse. Speed boosting is the only difference. But what difference does speed boosting make if you're? it's a spot up shooting point guard who's not going to get the basket anyway? Now we've got Dave the Busher. Hopefully he gets an Amethyst card like last year where there's better stats than a pink diamond card. He's got 82 open shot mid, he's got 70 open shot three, which is not great. He's got 64 speed, 62 acceleration. He's got 90 on ball defensive IQ, 90 low post defensive IQ. He's got 74 a lot of quickness, which is not great. So he's a really versatile defender, but not incredible on defense, if you get me. Like he's because he's small, he's only a 6'6 uh, power forward. He's not gonna do that well in the post. And also because he's quite slow laterally, he's not gonna be the best on ball defender, but still is solid. These are rebounding stats, but again, 6'6, so he's not gonna get that many. Good post hook, post fadeaway. Not a great driving layup or driving dunk. So yeah, this card's gonna be one of those cards where you're not really gonna want to use him in game. 
The, the only time I'd ever suggest using any David Busher card was his Amethyst last year because that card was just a beast. He, ironically, it was in the Beast collection, but um, yeah, that card was just incredible. This card is basically the same as last year's Ruby, which wasn't a great card, to be honest. And finally, there's a collection complete right now. It's for Ronnie Cycling and it's the Miami Heat collection. This card's got 98 intangibles, meaning that there's honestly better, like, probably sapphires than this card. 76 open shot mid, 75 open shot three. All right, I guess. Good rebounding stats. I think he is the leader. Either him or Haslam are the leaders in rebounding in Heat history. It might be him. Decent block of 81. Um, 80 on ball defense, IQ 89, low post defense, IQ. So he's a versatile defender. Decent speed of 70. Decent enough height of 611, I guess. Um, good enough post hook and post fadeaway. But like, this collection is going to cost about 150k to complete. And just have a look at this. This card is about 80k. Anthony Davis Ruby card absolutely trumps it in everything. In everything, Anthony Davis is better than this card at, except strength and like free throw. But more, nearly 300 stats difference, and this card is way cheaper than this card. So even though this is the first Amethyst Historic Collection, I, I can see 2K bumping these guys up to diamonds solely because of how bad all these are and how good the Ruby cards are right now. They've already started messing with the intangibles and releasing diamonds as rubies. So yeah, we'll see what happens. So anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.